Hi there, Ms. Lam's here. Today we would like to talk about how we use the carometer. So first of all, you will need the uh, carometer. And carometer has two functions. One of them is transmission. The other one is the absorbance. And then you will need the battery, okay? A cuvette and the two caps. All right. Okay, so let's uh, assemble this first. So let's put in the battery. So watch out for the positive end and the negative end. Okay, so um, as you can see closer, this one, the positive end is at the top. So positive end is at the top. So pop it in. Positive end, yeah, top. There you go. Okay, and then turn it on. Okay, so first of all, it will show it's not calibrated. So what we need to do is we need to calibrate it with the solvent that you use. So generally speaking, most of the time you will use water, distilled water as your solvent. So here is the cuvette. And cuvette here, you will see that there will be two clear side and two cloudy side. Okay, so bring it a bit closer. Oops. Now this is a cloudy side. This side is a clear side. So generally speaking, the cuvette can hold about three mils of solution. Okay, so fill up until to the line here. Okay, so we have some distilled water here. Okay, and then we fill it in. Now try to avoid uh, touching, oh, this will demo, but try to avoid touching the clear region because that's where the light will pass through. Okay, about three mils. Okay. And then you close it with the cap. Okay. Now this side is the clear side, and this one is the cloudy side. Okay, cloudy side. So make sure the clear side is in the pathway of the light. The light is actually shining uh, sideways. So, um, clear side. Okay. And then press calibrate. Okay, so once it's calibrated, so you can see that it's in transmittance 100. So that means it's um, all the light can pass through the distilled water. Okay, so that's the uh, calibrations. Then the next part we need to teach you is how we decide uh, which one we use for transmittance, which one we use for absorbance. All right, so let's talk about absorbance first. So I have prepared some colored solutions, okay. Generally speaking, for colored solutions, we will use absorbance. So first thing first, what we need to do is we need to change the functions to absorbance first. Okay. So let's say I put uh, orange, okay, and I want absorbance. Yeah, okay. So what happened is that, okay, so here is absorbance, okay, and now it's set up at 650 nanometers. So that is the uh, long infrared light, okay. So since we've got, uh, this is the closest red I could get, so I'll get an orange. And then the opposite color for uh, red is blue, okay. So uh, we need to adjust this to blue, which is around, uh, oh, green, sorry. Green, which is about 5 to 5. Okay, so basically, when we use absorbance, we use the complementary color. That, that means the opposite color of the solution. So you can look at the color wheel and check. Another alternative way is if you're not sure, what you can do is you can check the absorbance values, whichever that is the highest differences, okay, then we will select that one, okay? So here at this moment, because it's the same color, okay, we see that it's absorbance zero, zero, zero. So let's change the wavelength here. Okay, so now it's 629 red, as expected, because it's the same color, right? Red and orange, very similar. So therefore, uh, again, absorbance value is very low. Now we move on to the amber. Amber, again, now we start to see some increase in color, 0 0.011, okay?
Now enter to the green color light. Okay, as you can see, even the calorimeter is flashing green light. Okay, so here is 0 0.43, 0 0.43 for green. Okay, and then continue. Now moving on to blue, blue color, which is 470 nanometer, it's 0 0.9. So actually, blue is more suitable color compared to green. So you should use blue light for the red solutions. And then finally, just to test for the violet, it's 0.6. So actually, the best color is blue here, OK? Now, uh, so do the same for the other color. So this orange, reddish. OK, so next one is blue, which is a very common solution. So like, for example, you use it for Benedict solution, or you can use it for Burrett solution. OK, you want to detect, for example, the concentration differences before and after an experiment. OK, that's one of the applications that's possible. OK, so put it in, make sure it's the clear region that is within the light of the path. Path of the light, sorry. <laughs> OK, so here, OK, let's start again. So this one, blue, we expect should be red. So we can change it back to, now this one is 650, 1.6. Next one is 629. Oops. Oh, okay, wait, hold on. Uh, oh, let me just give it back. a little bit uh, overpressed. <laughs> okay, 650. So sometimes don't rush it. <laughs> okay, right. Now next one, the red one, 629 nanometers, is 1.557. Now just one thing to look out is that if your solution at the start of any of the wavelength is it's higher than 2.4 in absorbance, then you need to dilute it. Because if the solution is too dark, then the machine is not sensitive enough to detect the change. Okay, so now it's 1.5. Okay, and one more thing you will notice that sometimes it fluctuated a little bit. Okay, so the best way to overcome this problem is perhaps close the surrounding light. Okay, switch it off. Uh, that would be better. Okay, so maybe it's the background light that interfere with the, the reading. Okay, so yeah, and then moving on, uh, let's see, 1.5. Okay, so and then let's see, now this one is 629 is 1.5. And then Amber, 0 0.9, so it's much lower, right? Green, also uh, it's much lower than that. So actually, uh, the best one is to use in red, okay? Um, again, if you're not sure which color of light you should use, then just check it throughout, throughout the wavelength, and then note down the largest number, okay? So that's the way to find out the suitable wavelength. Okay. All right, so after looking at the absorbance, which is related to the color change, next part we're going to look at is the transmissions. Okay, so transmission is used to measure the level of cloudiness. So for example, uh, it's very useful when you're looking at the micro growth. So for example, let's say I have a bacteria, okay, in this solution, so it's a little bit cloudy, okay? Yeah, a little bit cloudy. Okay, so that's what happens in day one. And then uh, you allow it to incubate for 24 hours, and then it becomes cloudy because there's bacterial growth, okay? So uh, how can we detect that? So make sure you, uh, this is the clear side in the path of light. And generally speaking, um, there's no, so first of all, very important you change it back to transmission first. Uh, yes, sometimes you need to press a few harder. Okay, so again, we use the same idea of how we select the light. So let's start off with 650 first. Okay, so uh, now at here is um, 88.5. 84 for red. 82 for orange, 78 for green, 80 for uh, blue, 72 for, um, for 4, to, 4 to 8 violet. So actually, the best one 
is uh, 650. So you should use 650 nanometer the, uh, far red light, okay, for the uh, for this experiment. So let's say, okay, so the day one, your uh, your level of cloudiness is 88.7. The transmission is 88 point something, okay. Make sure it's in the clear window. Okay, so there's a clear window in the path. Now, after one day, okay, so the transmittance drop unto, until uh, 24.5, okay? So that's how you can measure the bacterial growth using the transmission method. I hope this video helps you in understanding how the um, carometer works. So that's it for today. Thank you and bye for now.